Good morning and welcome to Worship with Aldersgate. It's so nice to see you tuning in today and nice to have all of you in the room. Today is the day that God has made. It is a gift to us and we rejoice in it. As we get started with our worship service, I encourage you to drop your prayer requests in the comments. Those will be compiled into a prayer of the people at the end of the service. And as we begin today, I want to ask you the question of the day. Question of the day. When was the last time you got lost? <laughs> when was the last time you got lost? All right. Well, you can tell me later, Tim. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Never. Never. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over now to the musicians who are being led by a guest music director, Esteban Godoy. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Esteban. I am so happy to be here with you. And if you can, please stand and, and sing with us. We gather together. And I think it's a, it's a beautiful day to, to celebrate and to, to pray together and to, to sing to, to our Lord. So, let's do this. You may be seated. All right. It is time for our word. Oh, Bobby, get the stick mic. Get the stick mic. Thank you. Time for children to come forward, and I'm going to change microphones because I have no patience for disruptive microphones this morning. Check, 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 check. You want to bring it up a little bit, Bobby? Check. Robert. All right. I don't feel like that's very loud. It's really not very loud, is it? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be fun if we had like a microphone that had like a voice of God distorter on it? <laughs> Just thought about that. If it was like, boom, this is the Lord. Then our ears would fall off. Okay. All right. Well, we'll trust that that's good for people at home. Um, the question of the day, by the way, is, oh, it's, it is soft at home. Um, the question of the day today is, when is the last time you got lost? Friday. You got lost on Friday? <laughs> you didn't tell me that? Um, remember when my health class left the DNO? Oh, oh, yeah. Wait, oh, literally yes. Literally or figuratively? Literally or figuratively. I'm saying literally. <laughs> when was the last time you got lost? Yeah. In 2015. It's been a long time, right? Probably since you got lost. I'm glad to hear that. I almost got lost in Disney. Oh, that's right, at Disney World. Oh my goodness, that's right. That's right. 
Well, Timmy pointed out very wisely that because God is with us, we're never really lost, right? But sometimes you don't know where your parents are, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's actually not what I was going to talk to you about today, um, but I noticed uh, your enthusiasm, Tim. So there was a time that God's people, the Hebrew people, felt kind of lost because they had left the place where they were slaves in Egypt, and they knew that they were going to the promised land. Oh, man. <laughs> Check. Test. Oh, hey, all right. Um, God's people had left the place where they were slaves in Egypt, and they knew that they were going to the promised land, but to get there, they had to cross a wilderness, a place that had no houses and very few people. And they went around and around and around and around, and they felt kind of lost. While they were out in the wilderness, what happened to them is the same thing that happens to my kids when we get in the car and drive somewhere. Almost immediately they say, I'm hungry, right? And the people, when they were in the wilderness, got hungry, and they were kind of out of food. So they asked God, if they, it, Moses, the leader, asked God if he would provide the people some food because they were hungry on their journey and feeling kind of lost. And God said, sure, I'll give you some food. Now imagine in your mind if God were to feed you lunch. You imagine if God were going to feed you lunch? Don't you imagine there would be a huge table and it would be full of everything and there would be so much and there would be leftovers and you would have to get some containers and take the leftovers home for tomorrow because it would be so much because God is so generous and so amazing, right? Seems like that makes sense. That's not what God did. When the people were wandering and feeling lost in the wilderness and they asked for food, God said, I will give you food. But God gave them... God gave them only exactly what they needed for one day. And some people were like, hey, look at all this. And they packed it up and they said, I'm going to save it for a snack for tomorrow because I'm really hungry and maybe there won't be food for tomorrow. And you know what? The food that God gave the next day was no good. Couldn't eat it. It was already spoiled. God said, I am only just giving you enough for today. And that makes me think about as people who believe in God, how we, can, how we live our lives lots of times. We don't know how it's going to be tomorrow or the next day or the next day or where all the answers are going to come from or how things are going to turn out. We might know a tenth of a second beforehand. That's right. But, Timmy, you're, I'm, I'm losing my thought here, hon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wandering around lost now myself. <laughs> God gives us exactly what we need just for today. And we might say, I don't, but what about tomorrow? God says, don't you worry about tomorrow. I've got you covered today. I'll take care of you today. When God gave them that food, it, um, the Bible tells a very strange story. The Bible says that there was like dew on the ground in the morning. You know how the ground gets wet with dew? And that when the dew dried... There were white flakes on the ground that they could eat. I'm thinking like frosted flakes, maybe, just a few thousand years early. Um, and they looked at it and they said, what's that? Right? They'd never seen that before. Yeah, and their word for what's that is manna. Manna. What's that? Manna. And so that's what we call the special food that God gave the people in the wilderness. Okay, so we're going to... We call the food, what's that? That's exactly right. What's that? <laughs> All right, Fia. I'm getting lots of amens from Fia this morning. That's pretty good. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you for giving us exactly what we need, not less and not more, every single day. Help us to trust you. Bless these kids. Keep them safe and keep them healthy and allow them to be good friends to the people around them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Off you go then. And Annie is our liturgist this morning. The scripture lesson comes from the book Joshua chapter 5 verses 9 to 12. 
Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. On the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan. Joshua 5, 9 through 12. Thank you, Miss Annie. I have some really good news. We have been waiting because of supply chain issues for new microphones in this church for about approximately 4,000 years. <laughs> um, it, it, roughly, it feels like it. Um, next week, we should have new microphones. I'm telling you. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's where the microphones have been, wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years. Yes. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for these stories of the people of faith that occurred so long ago, God, but in retelling and remembering them can instruct us today. God, I ask that you would be with me, that you would help me to think clearly and speak clearly, and that you would rest in each of our hearts, God, and interpret the word specifically into our own lives. God, we thank you for your presence with us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. When was the last time you got lost? Anybody want to say so? You can put it in the comments. Yeah. You got lost this week? How did you do that? Oh, okay, so didn't know the right name of the place, or yeah, went to the wrong location of the right place. <laughs> yes, Albert. I get lost in Boston. You got lost in, who has not gotten lost in Boston? <laughs> Albert's telling us about trying to get back on 93. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I don't think we get lost as much as we used to because of our GPS, right? Our phones, isn't that right? What a miracle that is. I mean, like, there's biblical miracles, but then there's technological miracles, like a GPS that can save you hours of frustration and terrified moments of not being able to find I-93, right? Sam and I went over to Salem yesterday to have lunch uh, with his coworker. This is the coworker. Maybe some of you have this experience where you used to be in the office most of the time, and you had those coworkers who would walk by your office door and they would lean in, and you knew you're like, okay, I'm not getting anything done for 15 minutes because they're going to be here talking. This is that coworker, and they've been apart, you know, for two years now because Sam's been at home, and they keep in touch. And he said, well, it's her birthday. Let's go take her out to lunch, and we drove out to Salem, and Salem is one of those places like Boston, at least for me, where, I mean, there was no urban planning <laughs> when Salem was invented, when it was settled. You take a wrong turn, you're in trouble if you're not familiar. And we go all the way out there, and the whole way I'm talking to Sam about this message, and Sam is listening and saying, you know, nice encouraging things, as he usually does, and boop, 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 there we are, we drove right to the restaurant. Didn't get lost once. He wasn't even stressed. He wasn't worried he could attend to my sermon because the GPS was helping him the entire way. I don't think we get lost as much as we used to. And I think maybe we have become a little bit impatient then with not knowing exactly where we're going, right? Because we should have this knowledge. We should have this ability. We know so many things. We've got Google. We've got our phone. We've got all the information. And so when we find ourselves in a situation where we don't know where we're headed, we're really unsettled. Maybe 20 years ago, 
we were a little bit more flexible or resilient or tolerant of feeling like we were lost. But I wonder if that's changing for us. We have this a story about Joshua and the people, God's people going into the promised land that can tell us some things about taking an uncharted journey. A journey where ultimately you know the destination, but you're not exactly sure how you're going to get there, where the steps haven't been spelled out. And when I read this and was meditating on it, it reminds me of these last two years where we had a sudden and profound change occur. We knew where we wanted to be, but we weren't exactly sure how we were going to get there. So we remember that, as I was talking to the kids about this, that, um, that God's people, the Hebrew people, were slaves in Egypt, right? They, God raises Moses to help lead them out of Egypt. Part of the way that they lead, they go out of Egypt, is to pass through the Red Sea. You remember that great story and maybe some interpretations in the movies of the waters parting, right? The Egyptian army is coming right behind them. The waters part. They go through the waters, whoosh, back together and drown the army. It's this wonderful thing. And then the people grumble and complain. They get hungry. Lots of things happen like that. Then they wander, in part, in punishment for their grumbling, incidentally. That, see, that's a sermon we should preach to our kids when we get in the car. You know what I mean? All this grumbling. You, 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 you think it's taking a long time, do you now? Let's go around a few more times. That's basically what God did. God was exasperated. Um, it's true. That's true. Um, and f- for reasons that I could preach in a different sermon, Moses is not going to be the one who will finally take them into that land that God promised. Moses reaches the end of his life right as they're on the border of the promised land, right before they cross another river. And when he he knows that he will be passing away, he passes the baton of leadership to Joshua. So Moses passes, Joshua becomes the leader, and the very first task that he has is to take the people across the river into that unsettled, uncharted land. He knows that someday they will be settled there. God said this is a land flowing with milk and honey. It's such a beautiful term, unless you take it literally, and then it's kind of sticky. But (laughs) flowing with milk and honey means you are going to have cows, right? You are going to be really settled. Or what's that? Goats. Goats. Well, yes, you're right. Thank you. Platypus. (laughs) Platypus. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to have a sidebar. Remind me that I'm at Milk and Honey. I wasn't sure I was going to start out with this, and I didn't, but now I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, For the first time in two years, last night, Sam and I, with our band, had an indoor gig with a huge crowd of people and crazy wild times. And what's that? Michael was there. He was up in the front. He was like in the part of the mosh pit, and we were crowd surfing. (laughs) But first time in two years, indoor gig, 100 people. Like, it was amazing. It was so much fun. And I am so tired. And it was so worth it to be out there late, a pastor on Saturday night, you know, swinging from the chandeliers. It was absolutely wonderful. And I woke up this morning and said, that's not very smart, Rachel. And then I thought, I don't care. That was amazing. Like, this is a step in the right direction, you know? We are, we are making progress. That will come back, that theme of making progress. So anyway, I'm hopeful that what I say to you this morning makes some sense at all, because part of me is still swinging from that chandelier last night. Okay, milk and honey. Goats, thank you. You have goats. You have bees. It means that you're really well settled. It means that you've been there for years. It means there's peace. You have not been displaced. It means you have some prosperity. That's where the people are headed in a while. They're going to cross the river and get there in a number of years. But there's going to be some steps in between. What is that going to look like? Doesn't know. So we look in the beginning, um, I I love the beginning of the book of Joshua. There's some, a really encouraging, take courage type of prayer that I'll do in another sermon. But especially Joshua chapters 3, 4, and 5. And as I read through all of that, the the section we're going to 
um, consider concludes with the text that Annie read to us. What we see is that Joshua takes that leadership, and God does not hand him a GPS or a guidebook or the manual of how you enter into the promised land and begin to settle. God does not hand this all the, the different steps. He's a leader. He's called into leadership, but he cannot see the specifics of how this will happen. He only has the end in sight, the end goal in sight. And how does he find out what the next step is except that God just, he gives him just a word, just enough for today, right? It, it, over and over again, it says, then the Lord told Joshua, and the next step is taken. Then the Lord told Joshua, and Joshua leads the next step. The Lord doesn't say, Joshua, um, you know, you remember you used to, well, a long time ago, those AAA um, maps, you know, the guidebooks, and you'd flip the triptychs. Triptychs, triptychs there. I remember those from, God does not hand Joshua one of those. He hands him only the next step. I'm thinking about our leadership at all sorts of levels, maybe even from you know, little places like the church, all the way up to our nation and our world during the last two years, where these people who have the authority of leadership resting on their shoulders literally had no map, no guidebook at all. And all they could do was to listen and to give the next best step that we should take as we go through the pandemic. And we saw our leaders faithfully do this. And, I, you know, I'm, I believe that leaders should always be, um, you know, critiqued. We should always watch for their integrity and their honesty and their motives. We should look for that. So I'm not saying, like, blind obedience to leaders. But, man, how hard has this period been on leaders who really don't know the answers but have to make the next call? And what kind of response have we given to our leaders? We've been pretty vicious, I think. I think someone opens their mouth and says, well, okay, so now maybe we need to wear masks or now we're gonna take them off or now we're gonna do pool testing or now we're, you know, all these different steps. And oh my goodness, out come the trolls. Well, you know, just last month you were saying this and now you changed your mind. How dare you change your mind? Like, oh my goodness. When I read this story of Joshua taking just one next step and then one next step into an uncharted land, it reminds me of those who have helped to lead us through the pandemic, who did not know the whole way through, who might have gone this way just to go that way later, but because only one step was revealed at a time. And so to me, part of what I see here is an encouragement to us to be gracious and patient with our leaders as we continue. And hopefully, oh man, hopefully we're about done with this. But as they continue to give us the next step, that we wouldn't immediately leap to criticism and tearing them down, and what, but that we could say they're trying to give us their best here, the next best step. So there's a word about encouragement and grace and support to our leadership. When they were about to go through the Jordan River into the Promised Land, who do you think went first? They're going to go through a river. Who would you send if you have to go through a river? Who would go first? Maybe the good swimmers, just in case, right? Maybe the women and children? Tall people. Thank you. No, that's a good one. So you can see how deep it is, right, in, in case you have trouble, right? Timmy would go first. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Tim. Yes, the most brave people uh, who love thrills. Yeah. The people who Joshua calls to go first out of all of God's people are their most faithful, their religious leadership. Joshua calls the priests to gather or to, to pick up the Ark of the Covenant, which is a box that contains the presence of God. That's how they understand that to pick that up, and the priests to go to the water's edge. And this is such a cool, cool aspect of this story. When they get to the edge of the water, like they remember the Red Sea parting, whew, like that, right? 
the, the water's still there. It's not moving. I mean, it's flowing, but it's not just blowing itself apart. The priests have to put their foot in the water. They have to put their feet. They have to actually get their feet wet. And when they do that, then the waters begin to part. Priests have to be willing to take a risk, to risk looking a little dumb, to risk it being really deep, to Noah's point, right? They have to be willing to take that action, that first step of faith, in order for the next event to happen in their journey. And that reminds me, as I consider our journey through pandemic or whatever challenge that we're navigating, of our special role among our friends and neighbors and family members, because we are the people of faith. We are the priests to the people around us, right? If you talk about like a priesthood of all believers, we're the ones who bring a word from God to our families and our friends and our neighbors. So when there's a next step that needs to be taken, now it's time to do this, we can be people who say, I know that God's with me. I know that I can be brave. I know that God is holding me. And I'm willing to be one of the people who takes that first step. I've heard what the leadership has said. I'm willing to go ahead and put my foot where my mouth is. Wait. Anyway, <laughs> we don't want the foot where the mouth is. But, you know, <laughs> but I'm willing to do that. I am willing to take that step because I believe that God is with us. As people of faith in our communities, we can be people with more boldness than others around us because we know that God accompanies us when, I, when we go. Last point. This is the scripture, this is the part that Annie read to us. We need to notice with gratitude the little tiny incremental changes that happen even when they're uncomfortable. Annie read to us about how they had crossed through the Jordan River, they had gotten to the other side, they celebrated Passover, I guess with the manna, right? Passover with manna. I wonder if that's, must be legal. I know, it's not leaven. Thank you. Okay, good. I just thought of that now. Um, celebrated the Passover, and that was the last time they ever had manna. From that point on, they began to eat food that had been grown there in that land. For 40 years, they had been receiving food from God's hand for 40 years. <laughs> I like this as a mom. For 40 years, the ladies didn't have to cook. <laughs> That's how I'm hearing it, right? <laughs> for 40 years, it was Uber Eats. They just showed up for them, you know? 40 years. This is a generation. There are children. There are adults who've eaten nothing but manna their entire lives, according to this text. And all of a sudden... The food changes. Do you know what kind of revolt would happen in my house if all of a sudden I said, you can't have the food you've been having. Now we're going to eat this. And they would say, what? <laughs> That's not white. My children only eat white food, just so you know. It, like rice and bread and cream cheese, white. That's a huge switch, a huge change. You go right by it in the story because it's not sort of the climax, the day the food changed. But I'm reflecting on doing something like that to regular people, and there is going to be a whole lot of grumbling and a whole lot of upset things. This is different. There's change. I don't like it. I was used to that. Now I have to do this. And yet it is God showing them that they are taking one more step along the way to that promised future, that time when they're settled and established with their herds and their bees. One more step. I was wondering in my own mind, like if God had said, okay, um, you can eat uh, the food in the land, that's fine, but there's also still manna if you want manna. How many people would be like, yeah, that's what I'm used to. I'm totally staying over there. I'm, I'm going to stick with the old way of doing things because it's tradition. It's been my whole life. I've been eating manna. But God said, you can't have that anymore. That part's over. That's done. Now you will eat the food from the land. As we navigate through these unmapped out, uncharted um, months and days, as we 
get through this pandemic. There are changes, little tiny changes, markers along the way, and sometimes they make us uncomfortable. Only a month ago, my kids, when they were going to school, one month ago, were fully masks. Now no masks. A little uncomfortable, right? Yeah, these, and some, you hear some people, some our, our friends, um, son just got a bad cold, and she's like, bring the masks back, I can't stand this, now my kids are getting sick, you know? I mean, of course you could. But these changes can make us uncomfortable, and yet it is God saying to us, take the next step. I'm moving you along in the journey. Can we acknowledge with gratitude the changes that happen? One illustration, since Wes is not here uh, this morning, my son, I can use him as an illustration. (laughs) That's what happens. Our son is 18. He's a senior. He's applying to college. And college admissions come via email now, right? And so you, I mean, actually I haven't seen the email, but I assume it says, you know, UMass, whatever. Now here's your acceptance letter or not. Here's the, the decision So one would think, one, meaning me and Sam, you would think that he would open those letters with his parents, right? The ones who are going to pay? Annie knows this is not not the case. No. He wants to go to his girlfriend's house and open them with her. And they're a great couple. They've been dating a long time. He's growing up. They're very serious. Sam says, he ought to stay with us and open the letter with us. Right, I know, money. (laughs) It's true. But that's part of the growing up. That's his big support, that's his emotional support system. That's appropriate, right? As he grows, uh, his primary emotional support is not gonna come from us. It's a little uncomfortable. But it's an appropriate next step on the way for him. So he FaceTimed us, just so you know. He put the FaceTime so we could see his face when he opened the letter where he got waitlisted. See and acknowledge the little steps that happen on the way. If they're uncomfortable, still say, thank you, God. You're moving us towards where we need to go. So as we go through really unmapped, uncharted um, situations with this pandemic, or maybe this is applying to a different theme in your own life, a few notes from the story of Joshua. Have appreciation for leaders who do their level best to tell us the next step when they really can't see any further than that but are trying to serve and lead. Be people of faith who are willing to put your foot in the water. Say, yes, God's with us now. God's with us here. I'll do it. I'll be the one who does that so that everyone else can take the steps behind me, seeing that I've done it with confidence. And finally, when there are the little markers of change, even when they're uncomfortable, say thank you, God, for taking us one more step on the way. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, ooh, special music. Saban, I love your piano style. Oh. I think that you're a jazz pianist, aren't you? Um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You can hear it in the way yeah. you play. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, with with this song is is my my desire that through this way through this next step we can look for God and 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 and, and desire Him. I am a I am on the other way of, you know, my kids leaving the house. I am the way of bringing kids to the house, you know. So we have two babies, two, two kids, one baby. And this morning we had like, oh, this night we had those, you know, we had those parent situations when you know, the baby wasn't sleeping. And after a terrible night, when I woke up today, like 6.30, and my baby, like, is, is about and to turn one years old, he was crawling to me again, you know, and I thought, oh my gosh, after so October night, you are coming back to me, you know, and I was super tired, and, and, and he was coming to me, you know, crawling and, and full speed, and, and, and he was happy to see me, you know, and that's, that's something very 
true, and it's on the Bible, you know, that we should be like, like kids, like children, to trust and to, to go back to our Father. And yeah, with this song, I just want to, you know, express, and we can, in prayer, express our desire to, to worship God and to be with, with Him. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You. Desire and I long to worship you. You're my friend, you're my brother, my brother, even though you are my king. I love you. to worship you and I long to worship you and I long to worship you Amen Amen. Alrighty, a few announcements for you. There we are. Hmm. Okay. Um, first, uh, it's time for an offering. Uh, there's a link in the comments if you'd like to give online, and there is um, an offering plate out in the foyer for people here in the building. Uh, we have a special collection today um, for our Super Sunday. Today our focus, our mission's focus is on disaster relief and we are assembling flood buckets. These are five gallon buckets that are full of all sorts of cleaning supplies that might be used after a flood. And we're assembling five of them. And a number of you signed up and donated things, which was really good. And yesterday, I did a sweep of that whole list, and we purchased everything that wasn't donated. And by we, I mean I sent my dad to the store. And I think you went to three different stores, didn't you, to get everything. So he did a great job. Um, but, so we did spend some money. And so if you want to um, offset that by making a donation to Super Sunday, we appreciate it. And we will assemble those after church. Uh, we are having lunch here in the building from uh, Nick's, um, I don't know Nick, if it's just Nick's restaurant or what it is, but it's just Nick's, okay. It's like pizza, roast beef, you know, stuff like that. Um, so you're all welcome to stay for lunch. Um, please enjoy that food. They just opened about a month ago, and I went in and asked him about it, and he's giving us his most popular stuff uh, for lunch, so we hope you'll stay for that. 
Also, uh, last Sunday we did the Face of God art activity. Um, if you have your artwork hanging at the, in the foyer, go ahead and take it home. Um, and otherwise it'll just stay on display for a little bit longer. But thank you. All right. Thank you for uh, sending in your prayer requests and um, during the week and also during the broadcast today. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for being with us this morning, for speaking, us, speaking to us through music and through scripture and through prayer and through the message that you gave, God. We ask that you would continue to mold us and shape us as people who love you and serve you, that we could be a witness to those who are in the community around us who need your love so much. Help us to be people who are brave, Lord, and who can take the steps of faith, just like the Hebrew people who stepped into that River Jordan to cross into the Promised Land. God, we have so many concerns before us this morning in this difficult and challenging world. We bring them to you. First, the ones that are not spoken aloud or have not been shared. God, we know that you know these issues. We know that you understand them. We ask that you would be moving in those situations, God, and help us to have those eyes that can perceive, God, the way that you are answering prayers. To those prayers we add, those for those who are struggling with or in recovery from addiction and those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety, God, just ask for your help. We ask, as we think about those loved ones who are struggling, God, that you would just protect them and that you would heal them and bring them hope. Uh, we continue a long-standing prayer request, Lord, for Bob Kingsley's sister, Carol, for Marie LaRose's friend, Marie Patrice Mass, and for Eli Spicer, God, and ask that you'd supply their needs and support those who are around them, caring for them. We pray for the people of Ukraine who are displaced by war and ask that you would give great wisdom to world leaders in this really challenging situation. We pray for the Wilkinson family and ask that you would restore health. God, we pray for Emily Faulkner. This is Dave Faulkner's wife, who was diagnosed with breast cancer this week. Just be with all of them and their, their little baby boy as well, God. A very um, frightening diagnosis at a young age. God, we pray for Lana Davies' niece, who also is having up, upcoming breast cancer treatment. And we pray for Lowell Spicer, uh, Kevin Spicer's dad, and ask that you be with him in this season of life. God, we pray for two different groups of uh, Lana Davies' friends from Kansas City who are on medical mission trips. One's in Uganda, and the other one is in Poland, Romania, and Ukraine on the border. God, um, equip them and empower them and allow them to be your hands and feet there. We thank you that they can go. There are many joys among us today. We thank you for bringing us safe this far, Lord, in, in this adventure called life. Um, and we celebrate um, the Vinnie Costantino and Notorious, the a cappella group, um, made the finals in New York in April. And uh, pray that they meet their fundraising goal to be able to go on that trip to New York. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. Now we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to invite you to sing the last song with us. Is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Amen. Just in Jesus. 
Oh, oh, oh.